Hi guys, welcome back. It's been a while since I had a video out. I've had just a ton of things going on, so I apologize for that. But I have the much requested video for the dog paw stocking. Now, I can't take total credit for this. Um, I was cruising the Facebook groups or looking through my timeline, and I saw a message where somebody was looking for blanks of this. So she didn't post where she bought it, if it was for sale. She just said, I'm looking for these, and I saw it, and I thought, hmm, I wonder if I could make that, and turns out I can. Now, I created an SVG for this file, and or for this pattern, but I decided I would show you instead how to make your own pattern in Design Space using Design Space images. So when I cut mine out, I'm going to use my SVG. So yours might look slightly different, but it's the same method. And I thought, you know, rather than just give you the SVG, I really want you to learn Design Space so that you can see things like this and figure out how to create them. And it's super simple to do. So without further ado, let's get started. Let's jump over to Design Space. So let's get started. The first thing we need to do is collect our images. Let's go over here to the left hand toolbar and click on images. In the search bar, you're going to type PAW, P-A-W, and you can select any of them that you want. I was looking when I made mine for one that was a pretty straight up PAW. I didn't want anything that was kind of wonky like this one or that one. I wanted the top of it to be straight so I picked this one and this one is actually tiger paw print from do your best for cub scouts this is a purchase file I paid $1.49 for this and that is the one I used so I'm going to click on that and click insert images okay now all we need are some basic shapes to complete this so we're going to over here to shapes in the left hand toolbar and we're going to insert a rectangle. Okay, now let's click on the paw and the first thing we're going to do is duplicate it. Set this one aside. Now if you look at this paw over here in the layers panel, it's selected, it's the one in gray over here on the right hand toolbar. You can see it's comprised of three different layers. First of all, we don't need the three different layers. So the first thing I'm going to do is select ungroup and you can click on ungroup right up here in the top of the layers panel, right up here in the upper right corner, or while it's selected and this is the way I prefer, I just right click and click ungroup. I'm so glad they brought the right click features back. Now, if you look at how this paw is made, you'll see that it completes, it makes the um, pads of the paw by putting an overlay on it. And if you look at my picture up here, you can see that's not how I want that to be. So in order to get it the way we want it to be, I'm going to select both. Let's line those back up and yours should still be aligned. Just click center. So those are lined back up and I need to slice that out. But one thing we know about slicing, you can only slice two layers and you see this right up here we have three layers selected. Even though this one is turned off, that is considered a layer. So what I'm going to do is click on this yellow layer and we see that is the one that has two layers. Now, it's not giving me the option to ungroup. So that's telling me that this written layer is attached, not grouped. So I still need to get rid of it. Even though it's turned off, I need to get rid of it because it's counting it as a layer. The only way I can get rid of it is to separate it. So I'm going to go to the bottom of the layers panel right here and click detach. Alternately, you can right click and click detach. And now you can see it has separated this layer out by itself. And I can just go up here to the upper right corner and delete it. Perfect. Now I just want to make sure I haven't moved anything. So I'm going to align center. Those are centered. They're both selected. If you haven't selected them, draw a box, make sure they're both selected. You have two layers selected over here in the layers panel. And now we can slice. We can use the slice button at the bottom of the layers panel over here in the lower right, or my choice, right click, slice. And now what we've done, we can pull this away. We don't need that, but now we have 
the paw just like we I have it here in our stocking. We have the little circle to cut out so we can delete this piece too. Okay, now that we have both of these, this is the one we need. So we can get a hold of this one, right click, ungroup. We can delete the paw. So these are the two main pieces we need to make our stocking. Now, we're going to create the stocking portion, the portion here that's in the white Sherpa or the faux fur fabric. We're going to complete that part. So we're gonna use our rectangle. We're going to unlock keep proportions and you're going to size this to fit under here like this. And you can see right here, that's what I did. I welded a rectangle to a paw. So you can make this however you like. I kind of like it up here about the midpoint so that that curve is kind of gradual. And you see what I did there? Oh, it's sticking out just a little bit. I don't want it to stick out. So you kind of see how that is starting to form the base of the stocking. So now I want to select both of those pieces and I'm going to right click and click weld. And now we have made the base of our stocking. If we right click, move to back, move this back here. You see how it's starting to form? Okay, now I want to keep everything in proportion. So for right now, I'm going to select both, right click and group. Now we need to size this to the size that we want our finished stocking to be. So I'm gonna zoom out here a little bit so I have some room. My finished stocking is about 15 inches long from here to here. And you can see ours is about 6.27. So with the lock in the lock position, I'm going to change this to 15. And now that has resized the paw inside and the stocking to the proper width. So it's about seven and a half inches wide. And that's from the widest point here to here. So that looks great. Let's zoom out just a little bit more so that we can see the whole thing on the stocking or on the screen. Okay, now what we need to do to complete our pattern is we need to right click, we're gonna ungroup it, okay? Now we're just going to click on the stocking and we're going to duplicate it. You can right click, duplicate, or you can click duplicate right up here in the layers panel. But I'm going to duplicate it once, twice, three times. So we have a total of four of those gray pieces. And two of these are gonna be our lining. These two are gonna be our lining. These two are going to be our outer fabric. So what I wanna to do to di differentiate the lining pieces from the outside is change the color. So I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna click on color sync. And it doesn't matter which two, but two of them I'm gonna pull down to the blue layer. Because if you notice here, my um, well, I guess you can't really see the lining, but the inside of my stocking matches the cuff right here, and it also matches the paws. So these two are my lining pieces, and these are gonna be my outer fabric. These are gonna be cut in the Sherpa or the faux fur or whatever outer fabric you choose to use. It doesn't have to be like mine. And these two are gonna be the lining, which also, also matches the paw. Now, not to confuse you, but let's click back over to the layers panel. Even though I'm going to cut these out of the same fabric as the paw, I want to, I'm gonna to have to put heat and bond on the back of this fabric so that we can apply it to the front of the stocking. So I want this one to cut out on a separate mat. Now you could just tell it to cut it in a different mat, but I prefer to just change the color. So I'm just gonna change this to a lighter blue. So that just reminds me this is still the lining fabric. I'm still cutting this in the same fabric, but I need to do something different to this one. Okay, so we have the base of the bag. Now we need our cuff piece. 
So in order to make the cuff, we're going to take one of our paw pieces. We're going to go over to shapes and we're going to add a square. Let's drag the square right down here to our cuff. And we're going to unlock keep proportions. Now what we're going to do is stretch this square from one end of our cuff to the other. So I'm lining it up right here on the left edge and I'm going to pull it all the way to the other edge. And you can see it is 6.44 inches wide. I'm not, I don't care about the height right now, but it's 6.44 inches wide. I want to double that number. So I'm going to go up here to the width and it's 6.44. So I'm going to put 12.88. So 6.44 times two is 12.88. And this is our cuff. Now this is going to be cut in the same fabric as the lining and the paw. So I'm going to go over to the color sink and I'm going to drag this down to that blue layer. We don't have to treat it with heat and bond. So I'm going to keep it on this layer. So that is the cuff. The other thing is you need to decide how wide you want your cuff to be. Now mine is four inches and I kind of like that. So I'm going to keep this, make sure this is unlocked. And I'm going to go up to the height and I'm going to change it to, I want it to be four inches. So I need to double that. So I'm going to make that eight inches. All right. My cuff is four inches. So I needed to double that. So it's eight inches. And now I'm going to lock that back up so I don't accidentally move it. And we're finished with the cuff piece. Now we just need the hang tag piece right here. The part that you're going to hang the stocking with. And again, we're just going to insert a shape, get a square. Here it is. And we're going to unlock key proportions on that one. And we're going to change it to five inches high by six inches wide. So six by five and hit enter. And that is our hang tag. And again, I'm going to cut that out in the flannel. So I'm going to move that down to the blue layer. Now, if you want to add decorative bones or whatever here, let me pull this up so that you can see. Oops, get that out of the way. I added bones right here to the tails of my ribbon. If you want to do that, you can go ahead and do that now. So we would go to shapes. Oops, I'm sorry, go to images. And I just typed bone dog. And it's right here. And this one is from Create a Critter it's called Dog Bone. And I just hit insert. Now, if you're, well, let's go ahead and insert that. There it is. And you can just size it accordingly. You're probably not going to want it as big as it comes in. And then you would want two of those. So while it's selected, I would duplicate it. Now, if you're doing this for a cat, I would suggest going to images and either type mouse and putting like the silhouette of a mouse. That would be really cute hanging from the ties. This one would be really cute. I would just use the background layer. Any of them would be really cute. Another option would be fishbone and I would use this one. And what I would do is click it, right click, ungroup, and you're going to see it's made up of that, that, and that. So I would get rid of those pieces save one or the other of these pieces. You don't need them both. And I would go over here and change this to cut. And I would hang the fish bones instead of the bones. And you'll want to change the color of that. So you could hang two fish bones from the ties for a cat. So I'm going to get rid of this layer. Let's click make it. And here are your mats. Your first one's going to show your bones or your fish bone, whatever you're going to use. I cut these out in felt. The second mat 
depending on what color you assign to yours. But my second mat is my outer fabric. This is the Sherpa. I'm getting a message up here telling me that I'm going to need a large, the 24 inch mat. That's fine. I'm just going to click OK. This is my outer fabric. I cut mine in Sherpa. I got it at Joann's. You can use whatever fabric you want. This is the second piece of my outer fabric. This is my lining fabric. I cut this out in flannel. And again, you can do whatever fabric choice you want. You don't have to do flannel like I did. This is the second flannel piece, the paw. Again, you're going to need the long mat. And this is my piece. I'm going to cut this out in flannel, but I'm going to put heat and bond on it first. When I put the heat and bond on it, it's going to go heat and bond side against the mat. The flannel side will be facing up. So we're going to hit continue. I'm going to choose my maker. And I just wanted to show you in case you do make yours like I did. Uh, for the Sherpa fabric, I just went to view all and I typed in the search materials fur. And there is a faux fur. And this worked great for the Sherpa. And for the heat and bond, I chose um, just the cotton fabric. And then I chose more pressure. And honestly, I probably would have cut it without the more pressure. But that's how I did it. And it worked fabulously. Okay, for those of you new to heat and bond, I just wanted to show you real quickly how to prepare your fabric for the heat and bond application. You're going to take your piece of fabric that you've uh, decided to use for the paw print and you're just going to make sure it's iron nice you want to turn the steam off of your iron heat and bond comes in a package like this or you can buy it in a roll this is the heat and bond ultra hold there's a yard of heat and bond in here and it is just a great big sheet of the product and what i've done is just cut a piece slightly smaller than my fabric you can see here it doesn't have to be exact Heat and Bond has a rough, shiny side, and then it has a paper feeling side. The rough, shiny side is your adhesive, so you're going to put that down on your surface, your ironing surface, with the rough, shiny side facing up. You're going to put the wrong side of your fabric facing down. This is a flannel. It really doesn't have a wrong side, or if it does, I can't tell what it is. But if you have a wrong side of your fabric, you want that to be against the rough side of the heat and bond and then you're just going to run your iron over it. I've got my iron on cotton. I've got the steam turned off and it just takes a few seconds. Then you're just going to flip it over and iron it from the back. Just a few seconds. Make sure that adhesive gets melted. Then you're going to fan it, let it cool off. You don't want to peel it while it's hot. You'll pull the adhesive right off of it. And once it's cooled off, you can remove the paper backing. And you'll see that your flannel or fabric now has a shiny side to it. And this is the good side of the fabric. So now you're going to lay that on your Cricut mat. And I'm going to put the heat and bond side face down. And you're ready to go. And guys, don't worry about the stuff that gets left on your pink fabric mat. The rotary blade will cut right through that. If you start scraping it, you're going to scrape your adhesive off of your mats. You can use a lint roller if it really bothers you, but I mostly just take off the big pieces and just leave it on there. But go ahead and cut your pieces out and then I'll show you how to put this together. Okay, so now you should have all of your pieces cut out. You've got your cuff piece. You've got your two paw pieces in your lining fabric. You have your two paw pieces in your outer fabric. And isn't that crazy how well the maker cuts the Sherpa material? I mean, I love it. You should have your hang tag and you should have your paw print with the heat and bond side adhered to it.
Okay, so we're going to set aside everything except our paw prints. First, I'm going to start with the outer paw prints. And what you're going to do is take the two paw prints and put them right sides together. And they should line up pretty easily. Now, you can use pens or you, I prefer to use these Wonder Clips. I'll have these linked below the video in the video description. But whatever you choose is fine. And all you want to do is just clip these together just enough to keep them lined up. And again, if you want to use straight pens, that's totally up to you. You just want to keep everything lined up as you're sewing it. Okay, now you're going to take this over to your sewing machine and using whatever seam allowance is comfortable for you. Um, I like to use a half inch, but if you're, you feel better with a quarter inch, that's fine. Just make sure you stay with the same seam allowance for all of the stocking pieces. So I'm going to go and sew, make sure you backstitch at the beginning and I'm gonna sew right down here, leaving a half inch seam allowance. Gonna go around the paw and just go slow around these corners and pivot. Put your needle, when, when you get to a corner, put your needle down, pivot. So, 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 all the way back up to here and back stitch. And then you're going to do the exact same thing to your lining pieces. So let me sew this and I'll be right back. Okay, so you can see I have sewn all the way around the paw, leaving a half inch seam allowance or so. It doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, so now we're going to line our lining pieces up and we're going to do the same thing. We're going to go ahead and clip this all the way around except for on the side. We're going to use pins or something different just to remind us not to sew in this particular area. So I have two pins right here. It's big enough for my hand to fit through. That's all it needs to be. And other than that, I'm going to start sewing right here. I'm going to backstitch. So here, backstitch. I'm not sewing between the pins. Then I'm going to pick up sewing right here, backstitch, and continue sewing all the way around, backstitching at the end. So again, I'm going to go ahead and do the exact same thing. I'm going to sew all the way around except for between the two pins. So let me do that and I'll be right back. Okay, so I have, you can see I have sewn all the way around. I stopped sewing right here and I picked it back up right here. Okay. Okay, so now it's time to work on our cuff piece. We're going to press it and then you're going to fold it in half lengthwise and press. Then you're going to unfold it and your, when you press it like this, this should be the outside of your fabric, the pretty side. You want to face out and press. Then you're going to unfold it. You can flip it over and you're going to fold it this way and we're going to sew the short side. And you want to use the same seam allowance that you've been using throughout the project. So I'm going to stitch that up. Okay, so I stitched my sides up on my cuff and I trimmed away the excess. Now what you're going to do is turn it right side out and where you creased that fold, it should kind of just stop. You just have to work it a little bit. And that's your cuff. These are the raw edges. And this is the folded edge and you might want to give that a little press just to make it lay nicely. Now we're going to take our paw and we're going to turn it right side out. This is our outer fabric. I'm just going to turn them right side out so the pretty side's showing. Make sure you push out all of those little nubs in the paw nice and pushed out. Okay. Now, going to take your cuff and raw sides 
facing up, folded side facing towards the bottom of the paw. And we're going to work our cuff around this paw, lining up the side seam. Okay, and you're probably gonna have a little bit of extra fabric, that's okay. Just fit it in there as best you can. Line up those side seams. And what I like to do is kind of get these side seams lined up. And then I can work, if there's any extra fabric, I'm gonna fabric, <laughs> I'm gonna work that towards the seam and just kind of double it over. And then I'm going to clip because nobody's going to be able to see it. This is going to be under the cuff. And the same over here. I'm going to work it up. Any extra fabric, I'm kind of kind of hide between that seam. So it's nice and taut like that. I'm going to clip it. All right. Next, we want to take our hang tag. We're going to fold that in half and decide which side you want your stocking to hang. Do you want it to hang like this from the left or do you want it to hang from the right? I prefer them to hang from the left as I'm looking at it. I did the first one backwards, learned the hard way. So anyway, decide which side you want it on and you're going to clip that right on the side seam. Now I like to kind of stagger it like this. I push it up maybe you can see it a little better but if you want to stack it you can it's just a lot to sew through all of those layers so do it whichever way you like keep your tabs up above the stocking just a little bit and I like to pin these in place down here just so it's out of my way and I don't have to worry about it so they're pinned in place how well you can see that help there we go so this is how it looks that's my side seam I have my tabs up facing up and the loop is facing down okay now's the fun part now we're going to tuck it inside our lining we have our cuff in place we have our hang tag in place we're going to take our lining piece which is still wrong side out and we are going to put our hand inside of this one and stick it inside of this one that is still wrong side out. And you're going to work it up over that cuff. And you should still have your opening here. That's what you want. We're going to work our paws in there. What we're mostly work, working on is getting the lining piece around the outside and we want our little hang tag to go inside. So now we've got everything all lined up. I'm going to line up those side seams. Move your pins around if you need to. Hold your tags, your hang tag. Those are out of my way. You can see I have the tabs of my hang tags are sticking up above the stocking. Everything else I'm lining up raw edge to raw edge. Rearrange your clips if you need to.
Okay, so now I have everything lined up the way I want it. I'm going to take this over to my sewing machine and I'm going to sew around all three layers at the same time, all the way around the top. If you have a sewing machine that lets you slip this over like a cuff, this is the time to do that. You can cut off any tab that's sticking up. And remember this hole that we left right here? You're going to reach inside this hole and turn it right side out. All right, finish turning the lining out. Push all those paw nubs out. Might want to reach back in. Make sure these are pushed out on this end. Okay, so now we just have this hole right here. All you're going to do is pinch that closed, take it over to your machine, and you're going to sew right along that edge. And then you just have to work it into place. So all you're going to do is pinch that closed, take it over to your machine, and you're going to sew right along that edge. This is going to be inside the stocking. Nobody's going to see it. So I've sewn that little edge up. Now all that's left to do is tuck the lining inside the stocking. You just have to work it a little bit. But it'll go in. And then you just have to work it into place. You can kind of feel and then just work your cuff up. Here's your hangy tag. You just have to work it around a little bit. And then I would just give it a nice press. And we're ready to add our paw prints. So there you have it. Now all that's left to do is to put the iron on paw prints in here. Still need to straighten this out a little bit. So in order to do that, we're just going to grab our iron again and our heat and bond pieces. We're going to lay those out however you like. And just using a hot iron, no steam. Hold it just a few seconds and actually should have the steam turned off. And you're going to press that right on there. If you have the Cricut Easy Press, you could probably use that, although you would need to put some stuffing in there to get it off of the seams. And there you have it. There is your paw stocking. I will use the easy press and some iron on to personalize this. And I'll do that um, on my YouTube live for the easy press group. So I hope you guys enjoyed making your animal stockings for the holidays. I think these are going to be really fun. 
There is one last step and that is I just tied a ribbon into a bow and then I just hot glued the bones on the bottom. So whether you're doing the bones or the mouse or whatever you decide to put on the bottom, could be hearts. Um, I just cut those out in felt. They're just hot glued on and then I'm just going to hot glue that on to the corner of the, the same corner as the hang tag. But I don't want to do that until I personalize this and I'm going to do that with iron-on and I'll do the easy press and if you want to be sure and catch that video make sure you join our Cricut easy press group. Um, I'll be posting it in there for sure. We also have another group called Urban Makers. Both of those are linked in the video below this description or <laughs> in the description below this video. Um, one other thing I know you guys are hating me right now because your mat looks like this and this actually doesn't look as bad. I'm going to tell you a little trick that I use. It works great. I will say, disclaimer, Cricut does not recommend this, but I've done it several times, at least five or six times with this mat, and it just keeps on working. So all I do is take this to the kitchen sink, squirt just a little bit of like Dawn dish soap, just a little bit, you don't need a lot, and then just run it under water and rub your fingers on it. Don't use your fingernails, don't use a scraper or anything, just lightly rub it with your fingertips and all this stuff will come off. Um, there'll be a little bit left on there, but the bulk of it will come off. Um, rinse it really well and then just hang it somewhere to dry. And when you're done, when it's dry, it'll be sticky again. Do not use a scraper. Do not use a detergent like the Awesome Spray or Windex. Don't use anything like that. Just some mild dish soap, just your fingertips. Don't use a scrubby thing on it. Just your fingertips, run it under water, rinse it off, and your mat will look almost new. Not completely new, but um, it will keep working. This still has some stick to it, but when you're working with felt and the Sherpa and the flannel, it did, does get a lot of fuzzy on there. So there's a quick little tip for you. And again, it's not Cricut recommended, but I had a mat that was almost, um, it was pretty much done. It was finished. It was, I couldn't get it to stick anymore. I would used it several times, so I figured, what do I have to lose? I ran it under some water, ran my fingertips over it, rinsed it, and I was shocked. It was like almost new. So I got a lot more life out of it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, if you did, please subscribe. Click the red subscribe button so that you can be sure and catch the next one. And I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.